we go. Alright, I guess here we are, a Ventana. We're gonna do a uh, roof inspection on this 2017 Ventana from Newmont. That Eternal Bond just got damaged when somebody walked on it. Push in um, grommet. It does look like it cracked a little bit. That could be cleaned off. I can actually see dirt, so it's pretty easy to see water's been getting there. To get against the wires right there. I'm a little concerned that I have a nut right here. Nut for the satellite. All right, we were only going to do a um, an inspection, but he's going to be going cross country into rain, so we'll go ahead and knock out the repairs today real fast. It shouldn't take long. I have a few repairs that we need, and we'll just get this uh, done real fast. Okay, well, the first thing I'm just going to do is just cut out some of the loose tape. It's right there. Now we can clean that up. It'll be fine. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure the factory didn't install this stuff correct either. Just like everybody says, the turnabon works 100% of the time, 50% of the time. And then right here again, just gonna go ahead, kind of cut this flashing out. Maybe able to let me show you what it looks like then. So that's aluminum tape with tar underneath. And I don't know if you see how dirty it is right there. Because water is just getting directed right inside there. So it really wasn't doing anything. So I'll get this cut out a little bit. We'll clean everything up and we'll start sealing. So I cut out all the loose stuff. You can see how much dirt was getting in there. But the cables themselves were already sealed by this plate that is all the flashings over. But what I'll do is just clean this up a little bit. We'll put die over the top so it looks a little bit more presentable. And then right here, let's go ahead and get our Phillips. Loosen that up. We'll take that back now. And now it's aerodynamic. There we go. The TV antenna shouldn't blow off again. All right, now we'll tighten up the LMB head here. I think I've ever seen these come loose before. But yeah, I really like this area of town. Just recently rediscovered the Salt River just on the other side of there. It's been beautiful here. And the Verde River is just meeting up at the Salt River just on the other side of here. It's really awesome. Okay. I think that was all the mechanical things I need to do. Now we'll just start cleaning and sealing. All right, so even though this is a fiberglass roof, Numar uses a, a self-leveling uh, acrylic type sealant, otherwise known as Dicor lap sealant. Uh, the, the key to Dicor sealant is that it won't stick to dirt. Well, it'll stick to dirt, and then it won't stick to what you want it to stick to. So you need to get the dirt off, and then you need to prep the surface so it adheres better. So it's really a two-stage process. Uh, a lot of times I'll just use uh, mineral spirits. This is, we're calling paint thinner. Yeah, it smells more like uh, mineral spirits to me. Uh, but mineral spirits and solvents won't take off the dirt. So you have to use a cleaner. This is just gonna be glass cleaner. To get the surface clean. Get all the dirt off. Then use the solvent. there which is nice you don't really have to worry about damaging the fiberglass roof and that's going to kind of prep the old die core to accept a new fresh die core see how clean it is now you'll need to go over it one more time with a cleaner get rid of the haze and the cleanup but the die core won't stick to solvent or water so make sure it's dry before you actually put Dicor on it so I'm gonna clean off all the surfaces first and then we'll start sealing it up so by the time I'm done cleaning everything this will definitely be dry remember what I said this isn't even vital this thing crack right there it's really just gonna be cosmetic sealing anyways uh, this tape right here isn't even vital you can take this tape off the roof still intact it's not gonna leak it's just gonna be flashing that helps protect the seam underneath 
this is just where they terminated the end of the tape to kind of keep the tape from peeling off even though it's not ever supposed to peel. I know that it's eternally bonded, but you can see it's not. So let me just go ahead and start doing the rest of areas we're going to do and end up with the skylight. So now when it comes to the skylight right here, I'm definitely pretty confident this is not the original skylight. It likely came from uh, an aftermarket supplier. They use butyl tape underneath it. I don't really like butyl tape just because it's hard to get butyl tape to compress using plastic and screws. But because I can see through the plastic pretty well, I don't see water getting through there. But what you can see, like right there, I pointed out before, was water intrusion getting to the seal itself. So because they didn't put enough lap sealant around the side, like they added one tube and then I guess maybe forgot to do the rest. Uh, th that the purpose of Dicor, like I keep saying, it's like flashing to redirect the water away. The main seal's underneath, so if your if your uh, component's leaking, putting this seal right here on top isn't the, isn't the fix. You always need to make sure that you fix the leak first and then add the Dicor or whatever you want as a lap sealant to redirect water. Now, taking a skylight off, you always run the risk of breaking it and have to replace it, and these things are kind of expensive. So rather than uh, taking it off and resealing it. All I'm going to do is clean this up really well and seal over the top of it, but we do want to keep it from leaking in the future by putting that uh, flashing on or the die core on to redirect the water away. So I'm just going to go ahead and clean this up as best I can, then we'll start sealing everything. Of course, it's not vital, but whoever changes that before didn't clean off the old stuff and it kind of looks bad. If we can do this, that'll get the, keep water from pooling in places it doesn't need to pool. We might as well just go ahead and scrape this part off. I don't want to scrape too hard because I don't want to damage the paint. We'll do that, then I'll just be cleaning it off just like the uh, everything else with some cleaner solvent and then start sealing. Because I know this place was leaking a little bit right there. I might as well get this stuff out of the way so the new stuff will stick a little bit better and fix kind of that problem. Get some of this out of the way. All right, we got that cleaned off pretty well. Let me just go ahead and start cleaning. I'm just going to go ahead and use solvent to prep everything. Try to clean up as much of this old stuff as I can without putting a lot of effort into it. And we'll wipe it off one more time. Right. So it may be difficult to see, but this uh, old sealant's a lot whiter now. You can see how I kind of smeared it all over the place. We got rid of most of that trail all the way around, so that looks a bit better. So now when we put the new die core on, it'll stick really well to that. If you don't clean off the dirt, it will just stick to the dirt of the dike, old die core and you can peel it right back off again. But if you do it this way, it generally uh, adheres a lot better because the solvents in the tube will allow it to adhere to the old stuff. All right, so that's uh, been wiped off one more time. There's going to be a fine art to uh, sealing a skylight. It is just like a little bit like shingling the house. I usually start low and then build up on top. That way the top layer is flowing on top of the bottom layer rather than vice versa. And because of this self-leveling, you can't really do a bead because it will ooze out, so you have to do a lap on top of everything. This one won't be too visible from the inside, this entire flange, because of how this inner lens is made. So I'll probably bring a bead all the way around right here, and we'll try to make it look nice as much as we can. Uh, we only go over the screws because, again, that's flashing. We want to redirect water around the screws. All right, let's go ahead and start with all the original places, and we'll seal this up real fast. Again, right here, this is just mostly for cosmetic purposes. So we'll just seal up that little bit of gap right there. So it looks a little bit prettier. And the satellite cables right here, it's actually sealed up really well, but again, for cosmetic purposes, so it doesn't look quite so bad. I'm just going to go ahead and terminate that flashing. And hopefully make it look a little bit intentional. And 
the unintentional nonsense it looked like before. And because this is self-leveling, it'll make its way around all that. Okay, we'll just do the skylight next. Like I said, all I'm using is Dicor self-leveling lap sealant, white. I'll start with a bead around here, and because this is the side of the roof, I like to do the edge first, that way I don't have to lean over fresh stuff as I'm trying to do the edge. So I like to start with the edge so I have more maneuvering without putting my knee in fresh stuff. So with that one bead laid down, this is still the, the edge of the flange. I'll still do another one that overlaps and starts flowing down the side. But I'm also very close to the end of this too. Now I will admit it's not necessarily vital for me to seal around these screw holes again because they were sealed just fine. But only for my aesthetic. So it looks nice. Will I go ahead and seal it again so it all looks right? Now, if we were to have to seal this again, rather than sealing over the top of this stuff, you would want to peel it and reseal it again. There it is. This is more in line with what it should have looked like before. Now we're going to it'll help redirect water so it doesn't get underneath that flange and try to get there. we got to keep it moving. We want to just keep the water moving off the roof. That's, that's the whole nature of the dike core. Go ahead and let it puddle. Well, it may not be important. Newmar did it, so I'll go ahead and recap off these. Again, this should just help redirect water away. And you can't see this from the ground anyways. So with that, we're done. Everything we needed to do, we did. Pretty pleased with the way the skylight turned out. And now he should be pretty safe from uh, weather. Go ahead and clean up the roof and get Meech on the ground. All right, guys, so we'll just wrap this up real fast. That was a 2017 Newmar Ventana. We just were doing a roof inspection on it, and we found eh, a few things wrong with it. Uh, sealed it with Dicor, self-leveling sealant. After we cleaned it, showed you how to clean it and what to look for. Uh, the only other thing I will leave you with, this is what I discussed with the owner. This is a one-piece fiberglass gel coat roof. Uh, I don't know if you guys didn't see my knee pads, but they were pretty white from the oxidation from that paint, uh, the white paint from being on the roof. It is important, just like the sidewalls, you need to wa wash and wax your uh, sidewalls. You need to wash and wax these uh, fiberglass roofs too. The easiest thing to do is just to wash and wax on the roof and then wash the and wax the sides, obviously when all the oxidation comes off the roof, so wash the roof first. At the very least, get a UV protectant uh, sprayed on it too, but a wash and wax is the easiest way to do that on the roof. That's going to be for all fiberglass roofs, rubber roofs, TPO roofs, uh, uh, soap and water, and periodic UV protector on it. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. I gotta get out of this heat. Bye. Never underestimate the cleverness of RVers out there. Building basically a hoop barn over their trailer to cast shade on it and still manage to get another window AC in there. That's how you gotta survive Arizona summers, I guess.